Welcome to Sweden and the Swedish Tank Museum Arsenalen. During the 1920s, the Swedish Army had a need for armored cars and they tested a few different variants during the mid 1920s. And towards the end of 1920s, this was developed. A quite complicated vehicle with four wheel drive, four wheel steering and driver in both directions so they could go in both directions on the road. But lack of money, as in many cases, it was too expensive, so they had to look elsewhere. So the result is this, um, a poor man's solution. And from the beginning, the idea was that they're going to make a number of kits with armor plating deliver them to the cavalry units and in case of conflict the idea was that they should build their own armored cars put them on lorries and produce the number they needed but luckily someone said that well we need to have a few armored cars for education and training so they started to build a number of ready armored car of this type, the Model 31. And the first prototype was delivered in 1930 with armor plating from Bofors, who delivered uh, the protection and they used Volvo and Chevrolet lorry chassis as the base. And this one is a Volvo. In total, they made 30 of these, and they were more or less all different. Since they were delivered in small batches, four to eight vehicles at a time, over more than 10 years. So they delivered one batch on one chassis, and then a few years later, they ordered another batch on a different chassis, and that made all of them looked a bit different. So in 1939, they actually, when the Second World broke out, they had 19 of them. And I realized, hmm, we need some more. So they ordered another 10 in 1939, and they were delivered in 1940. So this one is actually one of the 10 last delivered vehicles built on a Volvo uh, with these more modern um, fenders. The previous ones they had um, the early 1930s design of, of chassis and this was a more mod modern one, even if the upper structure is pretty much the same. This car was delivered to Coet, the first cavalry regiment in Stockholm in 1940 and probably this one was one of the cars that Carl Johan Bernadot, the prince, had in his unit when he on the 9th of April 1940, when Denmark and Norway was invaded, he was ordered go from Stockholm to Malmö in the south of Sweden. So he took his unit with Model 31 armored cars. 24 hours later, they arrived in Malmö and luckily there were no invasion coming to Sweden. The armament of this vehicle was different during the years it was uh, in service. And from the beginning, they only had machine guns on the rear platform. Then later they upgraded some of them to have a 37 millimeter gun on this, um, on this one. And they had different vehicles in the unit. So one uh, gun uh, vehicle and two machine gun vehicles. Later during the war they upgraded again. So they had this configuration with a 20 millimeter automatic um, gun on 
the rear platform with a machine gun coaxial to the gun. They also had at the front, beside the driver, the possibility to have another machine gun. So in total they could have one 20 millimeter gun and two machine guns. But this varied over the years. They also had on the sides, on the railing, they could move those armor shields so they could use them for small arms uh, pointing out so they had the protection and they could move them depending on the situation. These were also detachable so they could use them on the ground and this was something that was ordered during the first world war so they had loads of these armor plates in stock so they could use them everywhere and in one particular case they also built an armored car out of this armor plating so they used hundreds of them to build the armor structure built on this on an ordinary lorry so they were quite inventive during the 1930s the vision out of this vehicle was not very good but um, there is a small hole that you can peek out through and you can also get a bit better vision and to get out of it it's a bit difficult not for long hot tall people this is an ordinary L volvo lv83 truck from 1939 with a wooden cabin and on the outside armor protection vision slots so you can look through here when you're driving under when you, when you're in combat uh, you don't see very much out through there so you need to open that up one interesting thing about this vehicle is this the arrow in front of the driver this is the rear facing camera of the 1930s when you're going reverse you can travel at quite high speed at the rear you have a guy using a crank and through cables you can turn this and tell the driver in which direction he should steer and when they were trained and they had practiced this for a long time they could travel quite fast with only this direction for the driver really skilled could go both directions quite easily simple but it works so the rear facing driver used this lever to direct to the driver which direction he should turn his steering wheel so he looked throughout here and the driver reversed in high speed telling the driver quite ingenious and it worked the crew of this vehicle was five to six people with two at the front one driver and one machine gun operator and the rest back here manning the 20 millimeter automatic gun and the coaxial machine gun on the other side and they also had their personal rifles so they could use these armor protection shield that they could place in different directions depending on the kind of situation they were in um, well quite effective but the vehicle itself was not not a very good one this armored car model 31 is quite interesting vehicle and it was used during a long time some of the earlier produced vehicles they were so worn that they had to replace the chassis and they took the armor protection cover and put it onto another lorry so they had different chassis during its lifetime 
They were quite useless off-road. They could travel quite fast, 60, 70 kilometers an hour on road, but off-road, no idea. They just got stuck. So uh, they were not that popular. But they were used until 1954 when they were taken out of service. And this vehicle is one of the last remaining vehicles that actually was um, used during this time. In the mid-1950s, four armoured cars of this type were secretly given to the police in Stockholm as used for riot control. And they were used, uh, well, they were not used, but they had them in storage for a number of years, if needed but they were never used in real action. This vehicle was given to the Army Museum in 1962, and in total we have two remaining vehicles, complete ones, in Sweden. If you like our films, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, bye-bye.